And we're live. And we're live. Middle camera, right? It is the middle camera. Middle camera. I'm Keeper. I'm Mike. This is name pending. This is name pending. This is name pending. This is name pending. But yes, I'm Mike Culberson. I am Keeper. Um, and we do have a Cabo and a Pearl. Pearl's actually under here. I, I drug the dog bed out for her. Pearl Scouts down below. That's um, fine. I would have drugged the dog chairs out, but they're still all the way in the back. And that's far. Because we should have grabbed them when we were down there. But yeah, I mean, the sides. cooler's still out there. Like, we left a lot of shit out. Eh. 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 So, book talk. Because you know where I'm at. We fit- oh, I yeah, show okay. up, and I still have 30 minutes left. I think it was like 37 minutes of Forging Hephaestus. Yeah. And I was really expecting more traffic. I was expecting more traffic on 46 coming out here. So that way I could finish off my book at 1.5 times speed. Because I listen to books faster on speed, not mic speed. So yeah, Forging Hephaestus. Oh my goodness, the book just... Dude, you got cap. The epilogue. The you, epilogue you... is so great because it covers... The end of the book covers every single aspect, every single facet you care about. Yeah. And it, it leaves the story, and then it goes... The last line of the book's just like, Mike, drop. Fuck you. Yeah, no, no. It drops the big ass cliffhanger and it does it in the best way possible. Yeah, the last line. Yeah. The last line. Great book. Already started the second book. You got captured. Oh, I was more than captured. Absolutely captured captured by that. I was like, I still got like 37 minutes when we got here. And you're like, oh, just, just play the book. So we're sitting on your front porch and just like, you're listening to the book with me, Mm -hmm. probably at faster speed. Than what you probably listen to it, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what's next? He what's keeps next? he keeps looking at me. He's like, that just happened, and I'm like, hmm? and I don't say anything. I'm just quiet. I'm just waiting, and then proper enemy gets more than proper justice. Mm. Dude comes in, and then they drop like a little hint. It was like, oh, so and so asked about so and so's power, and then they're like. Please wipe my memory. Oh, dude, that was fucking brutal. Think about it. For a guild of villains, for one villain who knows pretty much everything, you'd say, who Mm -hmm. is experienced at all, all knowing, is just like, yeah, I asked so-and-so, can you wipe my memory? Because it was, I I would rather not know. Exactly. I would rather not know. And that's how you... Dude got justice. It was like, that's the perfect mm-hmm. prison, court sy- outside of the court system, justice. It was like, mm, forging Hephaestus. But I mean, you know where I'm at. I started the second book while we're setting up. Mm-hmm. And they just started with aliens. There's just aliens? Yeah, aliens. <laughs> aliens. We're not going to fuck around. Hey, there's an alien invasion. Like, all the things we, we touched on at the end of the book. We are ignoring everything. Time frame has met, but aliens? <laughs> like, that's just, that's where I'm at. And I'm just like, mm. so. Uh, the man was so entranced. I told him that there was a second book. And he was like, we're setting up. And he's listening to the audio. We're not talking because he's listening to the next <laughs> audio book because he was wanted to get into it so bad. And now I have my foot in the door and I'm like, like I enjoy our podcast session. So, so I, I, I found out more. the real reason why you're like, should we podcast tonight? The real reason you didn't want to. Talk I just to wanted me. to you sit and listen to the book with you. Yeah, you just wanted to sit there and listen to the book with you as we drink and hang around the fire. <laughs> I mean, sorry guys, but we were, we were going to fellowship without you guys. Mm. <laughs> but that that's where I'm at book reading because now you have thrown me in. What we're at nineteen episodes in? Yeah. 19 episodes in, I'm now... No, this is episode 22. Oh, see, I can't count. I'm from Tennessee. But 22, 22 episodes in, I think I am passing the threshold of the door of book reading <laughs> that now I will continuously give my week update of where I'm at of, oh my goodness. And I'll, I'll totally be way slower than you. But I have a lot of Lego builds 
where yeah. I can start doing my Lego builds and listen to books. Hey, Cobble. Because that was three hours of the book today. But that's my book reading. Let's let's jump into the meat of book reading. So of of course I'm still I'm still listening to the rear rear chronicles, right? Because that's my to and from work. So that's not going very quickly, right? Yeah. It's, um, it's your hour to and fro. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I spend two hours every day listening to this and I'm on book four. That's your constant. Like it's gonna consistently yeah, whittle and, it down. I'm, I'm not like you. I don't speed up my audiobook, so it's at whatever speed the dude's reading it. Right. So book two, for example, is thirty seven hours. Fed up is twenty something, <laughs> but so I'm on book four, and we've we've e- escalated. Yeah, Cab- Cabo's just a, gnawing. He's on just the wood. a munching back there. He sees himself a log, and he's gonna grab himself a piece. By the way, we're always gonna interrupt for a furry co-host. <laughs> there will be no apologies for that. <laughs> so, um, doing for work. Yeah, Normal so, speed. so book book four, we are getting into the we have expanded, we're past like the country level of action. We're getting into the like the the national like and, level. And off podcast you were talking about. It it's already hit like the meat and potatoes, but now it's meat and potatoes with value. Yes. Like yes. the meat and potatoes were great, but now we have more. Yeah. It's like we have sustenance. Yeah, no, potatoes. there's there's a lot. Like we're in we're we're getting to save the Save the human race territory now, right? So the nitty gritty of we're doing things. Yeah, yeah, and, and we did the the bog stand. We've gone through the bog standard um fantasy uh naval battle. Okay, like medieval, like naval, like it. It I could really tell that the author did a lot of research because he touched on a lot of facets that it, weren't. It's like it's like when like every every time you could really hear it whenever an author is like really got into the blacksmithing or really got into you know researching naval stuff or anything like that so quick sidebar the new uh was it all quiet on the western front yeah the way they redid that it was dubbed in english but the way they built that covered a lot of facets or a lot of aspects that weren't covered in the original uh all quiet on the western front it sounds very similar in that book series where someone actually did research on what happened did research it was like oh well in the movie and story and and what actually happened is like yeah well we signed this but the war doesn't end until midday this day yeah so we still have six hours of fighting so it sounds very similar where there was actual proper research done for history but on this one we touched every single aspect. So yeah, I mean, they went deep. You could tell that they really got into the like ship handling and of the times, right? Of the of the relative technology that Port, this era. Starboard, Aster. Well, well, I mean, we got into like how like sails are rearranged and shit. Oh, like yeah. they're saying some shit. And I was like, I don't know what no this means, but it sounds damn good. I would love that because uh, was it the Sea of Thieves came out and. They built that same mechanism where every mechanism actually mattered, depending on how your sail was with the wind. And if the wind's coming against you, you don't lift your sail all the way. You don't mm-hmm. just coast. You turn at a certain angle and you kind of zigzag. You serpentine. Mm-hmm. So Because you're trying to catch the wind. You're trying to catch wind each possible way. And you have people manning it all the time. Did so, you see that sparkle? That was I cool. did see that. <laughs> I was like, ooh. <laughs> Um, but so anyway, this so book that touches that's, on it. Yeah, that's that's where I'm kind of at in Rear Chronicles, right? But um, we have a giant ship battle. Like we've touched on other. Yeah, and now now we've gone to the 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 where we're trekking through the jungle, right? Like you know, and you it's touch jungle, and my mind goes multiple different ways. We got Vietnam, we got all these different Roman jungle. I mean, think nomenclatures. Of, think of like. It's like ancient times mixed with like you know all the like British guys like trooping through Africa kind of deal. More Africa, more India, before it was civilized. More India, Whereas more India. Yeah, before it was civilized, we're still lots of tribes. tribes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, you know history there. That's that's a brutal one. So, you but got it's the... still based in a fantasy world, right? So they've got like goblins. 
who and these aren't like your bog standard goblins these are like badass goblins who will like eat you okay in, in the jungle is their environment so this touches more on like harry potter type goblins or lord of the rings goblins versus like D D goblins because D D goblins are more they're fodder yeah yeah no these are badass goblins yeah which is um, more touching on Harry Potter type realm existence. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm at every year at Chronicles, and I again I suggest it because it's it it really like there's some very fat like we're getting into like politics and stuff like that, and people doing movements in the background and everything. By the way, tune in soon. We're gonna start our podcast on politics. Oh, it's a coming. That won't be here. It'll be coffee talk. It, we'll it'll be, be coffee talk. Be around the countertop. We'll we'll be at least on my point. We'll be throwing out what people stand on, what people stand for, say they stand for, because we know politics. What they stand for, what they want to stand for, and then our opinion on it. Because you know why not? Opinion based, where we stand on, mm-hmm. where we feel on. Mm-hmm. So, but the other thing I wanted to talk about is the other. Like, I went through a number of different books this week where it was like I started it and I was like, eh, I wasn't about that life. You tried to recycle back to things or new ones? New ones. Okay. Um, Because I know know your recycle bin is very vast. Yes. Of things that are just like, these are are true. And the only reason I say it is because I just started watching Stargate again. Oh, I'm at at like season two, episode six. Yeah. And it's playing in the background at work. So I'm partially watching, but I also know what happens. So there's some episodes I was like, this one was so boring, I'm skipping. Yep. Because it was so memorably bad. Oh, yeah. That Yeah, like, some of them are rough. Like the one where the, I think it was like season one episode, whatever, later episodes, 18 or 19, where dude became, he was like, oh, my own God. SG-1 comes in, dude tries to sleep with Samantha Carter. And it's just like, I don't want to rewatch this one. But you have. Back to the book series part of it. You have this recycle bin of vast book series you retouch on. Yeah. And I'm slowly building that. I would retouch on Galaxy Outlaws. Oh, yeah. I would absolutely. retouch on Superpowers and Corpies. Like, they're, I'm building my repertoire of, I would touch it again. Now, the whole, the one where metals mess with magic. Mm-hmm. I have the whole series, but... I'm probably going to have to wait for my own. Uh, wait wait for me to build my book reading collection for me to retouch it because it was so dry for me for book one. I did start book two, and it definitely is catching. So weird thing, you know how I told you to jump to, like, the Alloy of Law? Yeah. Like, art, which is past the, like, the 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 empire arc and yes. it's got completely different characters and everything. I was reading a a post by the the author because the the so alloy of we well, might have read the same thing if it's on Reddit. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, because the alloy of law w- is like my favorite like arc. Like I love it more than the other seven books that came before it. I love origin stories, but yeah. I don't like slow origin story. Well, this is the origin of the world, right? And and to a level it it matters, but I don't think 14 hours at 1.5 speed. Holy crap, and I'm still not in in. Yeah. It was like maybe you could have sped up the book a little bit for the intro book. But the funny thing is is that I was reading a post by the author and he was saying that like that book Alloy of Law was only supposed to be like a one-off novella. And then it ended up being like this like it became this big like it became the series. This this big series it became a much bigger book and bigger world and bigger characters than it was originally meant to be. The thing is is that he was like, "Yeah, I'm not really sure if I like the pacing and everything in it." But I love the pacing and everything. I mean, so the pacing is one of the things that really hit me that was... Well, that's that's the one that you started, the, the Empire arc that you started with. And, and don't the get Alloy me wrong. of Law is different and has a different pacing. 
I think it will have its place in the story. But from what I've researched, ooh, excuse me, from what I researched, it has its own story arc. Mm -hmm. So it's something I can go back to mm -hmm. that might be spoiled as I continue. Mm -hmm. Really, it will be spoiled as I continue. Mm -hmm. But it's something I can touch back on. It was like, now I have more interest. I have more understanding. Which, it's great that we're talking about this because I know somewhere out on the internet, purists are going to be like, what are you doing? You can't do this out of order. What are you, a madman? But the if we're reading the same post, the author even said, I think there was, there was four books that could be read outside of order, but they can go into a certain order, the way they were released, the way they were written. Yeah. That shows chronological order. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go for the story and then stop halfway through a book and then start this book to understand why this is going on, why this is going on, why this is going on. Now you'll have your backstory and then can continue back with the, the other book that you're currently reading. But yeah. that that did... I've I've actually got a long book talk this time, so you're just gonna have to buckle up, Buttercup. Oh no, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I actually have something to talk about. Like, um, the more we're reading, the more I'm listening through books. I am more intrigued as we continue this, and it's something that even Kelt's gonna have to just suck it up, Buttercup. Fuck you, Kelt. And he's just gonna have to deal with it as we continue through this dialogue of books. <laughs> And you know what, maybe we'll just have one-off videos of the books, and then we'll start the podcast. Or we'll just throw this in, and we'll be like, skip to this number for passing book talk. But, I mean, you recommend Superpowers, and I that was straight-up fucking heroin, book reading-wise. Jump to Galaxy Outlaws. That was another one that I read through all, I think it's like 18 books, counting the point fives. Yeah. And it was just like, mm, okay. To the point, Aardvark's even, he was like, I've been looking for books. And I was like, here you go, audiobook, here you go. <clears throat> and if you need access to my Audible, I'll give it to you. Uh, but I did want to talk about another series, which this is, this is a favorite series of mine. And part of the reason it's a favorite series of mine is I caught, the first book when I was a kid at some point. Okay. And then, like, later on as an adult, I found out that there were more books to it, and I read the other two books. And you were like, yes, please. And then recently, there came out a, I think it was either a novella or a fourth book altogether for it. All right, stop it, teasing us. Get to the point. Uh, So, it's called, um, uh, it's called the, uh, it, I mean, the collection is called The Old Kingdom, right? Okay. Like, that's the series. Uh, and it starts with, let me make sure. I think it said uh, Sabriel, uh, and it's by Garth Nix. Have you ever read anything by Garth Nix? Not to my knowledge. Um, but hold on. I have my phone. I said I would always do that, and I continue on. Garth Nix. But continue. So there is a... The entire world is, doesn't consist of magic, right? But there is a section of the world that is almost like its own piece of the world. And along the border between it and it, it, it almost seems like, you know, old school Britain. Yes, I have read The Seventh Towers. Mm -hmm. Oh, Garth Nix? Yep. Yeah. I, that is, I read through part of that series in high school. Yeah, but so the the premise being is that like magic exists in this place, and there is a border region between a world of essentially a world of magic, a thorough plane between the it, living without magic. And it's living it's with straight magic. up a wall. Yeah, it is a fucking stone wall and woven through with magic and shit. And the only reason I even touched on part of that series was because um, my. It's, was, it's not the Seven Towers. No, it's not the Seven Towers, but it was the uh, Stardust. Oh, yeah. Stardust. She recommended Stardust and that I check out this author. I jumped onto different series. Yeah. And I was like, this has nothing to do with it. And no. she was like, oh, well, you read the wrong book. But 
still write a book thing on it because it was 11th grade AP whatever was I think it was like I don't know something reading and understanding so in this old world they have an issue with people coming back from the dead due to like like chaos magic essentially right okay um couple different thoughts on that and there is a a person with a title i forget what the exact title of it is right but they hold this title and it's a, a family tradition going way back when right and it follows the blood and goes from father to daughter to son to so whatever. i can understand that because in irish culture the oldest matriarch the oldest female in the family and mm-hmm. the oldest male in the family you're either the patriarch or the matriarch so my dad is the oldest patriarch in our family. Now his mom is the old, oldest matriarch in his family. So when my dad passes, because life is finite, then I will be the oldest patriarch. And either his mom or my mom will be the oldest matriarch. So I mean, Irish culture has the same thing in a way where you are all knowing. It's like, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, their job. And in, in the way that they do it is with magic bell. In each bell, okay, I'm intrigued a, now. Each bell, there's I think seven bells, and each bell holds a different power, right? And depending on how you ring the bell depends on how you activate the power. And some of it will like control the dead, or you know, deafen them, or you know, cast them back. And the there's an anti there's a there's an anti to that where people you know of chaos have bells that are designed to do the opposite of all these things and to expel or repel yeah in so and the way that it works is that there is a essentially a land of the dead that these these people step into and it acts as essentially a giant river and it has different layers to it. This is the same author, correct? Yeah. So, sounds like he touched on a couple different cultures. Yes. And I love that because now we have a mesh. We have a mesh. We have a melting pot in a way of... multi. We have the matriarch patriarch, which is very Scandinavian, Nordic type understanding. Yeah. Because a lot of cultures is like, well, you're the oldest male. Regardless of who the oldest female is, the your wife is the oldest female now. Because you're the you are the biggest one, so everyone before you guys is relevant. They may still be there, they may pass knowledge, but they are an elder now. Now moving past that, now we touch on the land of the dead. So now we're talking about a lot of the Hispanic cultures. Yeah, we talk on a lot of the um, Southern Asian cultures, mm-hmm. stretching all the way to Not Pakistan that, at the most. But it's a river of the dead. So and now we touch on European or even you know maybe Egyptian uh Egyptians had it yeah European all the way down if we go off European with Alexander the Great mm-hmm. touching everything he touched yes Europeans definitely had it Egyptians down to I think the furthest stretch of Egypt at the time was Ethiopia modern day all the way up through Sahara to the far west. I'm drawing a blank, 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 blank. I'm drawing a blank. Um, all the way to West Africa, Northwest Africa. Yeah. But all that had a, a river of the dead. People that either no one loved them or they couldn't pay the toll or they couldn't. And so the first book starts off with Sabriel is on the non-magic side of the wall. And is this is the protagonist? Or this anything? is this is your protagonist. It's a female protagonist, and she's in boarding school, right? So modern day, so anywhere eighteen hundreds to today's time. Like I think early nineteen hundreds, okay. like so nineteen in the threshold, yeah, eighteen. So modern day, loosely, like like they have guns, but they aren't like they're super not... competent. Also, like technology ends up not working the closer you get to the wall, and when you cross over it. It, like, malfunctions completely. So, multiple so, different facets. But and going, they, they going have, back... They have guards on, along the wall to keep creatures, but the guards are armed with, like, 
Brett, all all I'm seeing is Stardust. This old gentleman that's old fucking <laughs> raggy. Like, dude doesn't look like he could fight you, let alone breathe anything but dust. Whoops the shit out of you. And whoops the shit out of someone that just became an adult. He just hit 17, 18 in the movie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I think he just became an adult. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm going to go find, well, I'm going to go collect this star for the girl yeah. I like. But, um, so, you know, they, they'll have, like, metal breastplates with, like, modern military unit, like, modern military uniforms, modern, yeah. like, khakis or whatever, right? Whatever was modern at that time. Well, I mean, up until they'll have, World War One, we were still fighting Warfront one yeah. and one line. And so they'll have guns, but they'll also have swords or spears, right? Yeah, you're close quarters. Um, so what it, what it starts is she receives a message from like a bound spirit and it gives her the bells and it gives her a letter from her father. And essentially her father is saying, hey, if you're receiving this, I'm dead. And it's your job to take up the mantle and bad shit's happening. And she's like, well, now I have to abandon my entire life. She's young, right? She's like, I don't know, 17 or something. I mean, she just realistically at that time frame. I mean, going off history is right. like your first period, you become a woman. Mm -hmm. So now she's three, four years prime from being a woman. It's like, congratulations, you are the matriarch. Yeah, no, no. Now you are in charge of this task and, you know. But what I like about the series is that the first book follows a protagonist. And then the second book follows a different protagonist. And so, that the third book follows a different protagonist. So, so far, I've liked the way you've laid out the book and the way this author has done the research on it. And I've read two of the books. Yeah. Completely different series. Yeah. But I love the way the author put things. He's an excellent writer. Which means he's done proper research. He's done enough historical research. He's done enough understanding of In what happened at the time to build a proper dialogue for me to portray it. Yeah. So that way, modern day can understand what I'm talking about and what's going on. Yeah. And, and if you're a history buff, you're going to love it on some aspects. If you're fantasy buff, you're going to love it on some aspects, it sounds like. Well, and, and yeah, no, I, I love it because it, it really... He does an excellent job of building his world. His world is built very well. The magic system feels tight. And even though you get a different protagonist in each book, every single time, I fall in love with the protag protagonist. Like, this is my fucking person. Like, I am best friends with this person. And I am rooting for them the entire ride. I mean, realistically, going through Forging Hephaestus was like, Okay, we have our protagonist, and we have our antagonist. It's like, Balaam, real quick, you understand, hates you for some reason, and then there's Nexus, and then you have all these people that could be the big bad. You didn't have to stop. Well, we have all these different people that could be the big bad. It's like, okay, so we have this, but in this book series, you don't know who's going to live or die. Yeah. It was like, and then we keep introducing these people that could be the new protagonist. And I'm just like, please don't die. It's like, I have some sentimental attachment with Corey. I have some sentimental attachment with Beverly. Yeah. Chloe. Yeah. And then we start going through this and it's just like, I mean, Ivan's a big bad. Is he going to be the protagonist? Yeah. What is he? <laughs> what is he? Okay. We got an intermission. You're on that little weeble wobble wedge. Yeah, I mean it's it's not stable over here. I'm like, mm, mm. well, weeble wobbles wobble, but they don't fall mm. down. Say that to Pearl. No, she falls down. She's not a weeble wobble. She used to be a weeble wobble. No, she's just always in danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. Yeah, you, her, and your kid got a lot in common. No, oh, when. When Ruth almost freaking face planted against the plank. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, and then she looks up at me. I was like, I'm just laughing my ass off. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're fine. What's up? And then she, the shit eating grin. Oh, I know she's my kid. 
almost meets disaster and just is like, you could have ruined tonight's podcast. <laughs> ER visit immediately. Do do the podcast in the ER. Ooh, off phones. This is their phone ER podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I did. I did want to, before we closed out book talk. I did want to talk about the fact that I'm also reading. Oh, there's the, more the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. Oh, you did say you wanted to touch on this. Um, you're reading the comic books of this, right? Yes, yes, because they released like collections the compilations of the comics. of. So, uh, IDW, and I don't know what IDW stands for, but they're some company out there. Like, it's a they, company. They got. They got the licensing for like Sonic. Uh, they comics. got the licensing to release. Yes. Yeah. Um. Well, I think they make and produce. Yes. Um, to, yes, to release. I mean, they can still produce. They need approval for certain aspects. Right, because but... it, it used to be Archie. Yes. Right, and those were very like childish. Right, they never touched on anything <laughs> crazy the dark. Old comics used to touch on the child aspect of. Innocence in a way, and I I loved the old Archie comics of Sonic, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but I was also a kid. But then I was like, oh man, Sonic still has comics coming out, and it oh, touches yeah. on the the video games and shit like that. So like, touches on battles, touches on fights, talk like like literally the first like book collect like the first arc was just reintroducing all these characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like ah, oh, there's there's Silver, there's Shadow, there's Knuckles, and it's like. I love the little page you shared with me when I was building my Lego set. Oh, like, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, where Eggman's like, what What are you trying to do? You have to understand it. If I wanted to kill Kasonic, I would just fucking carpet bomb his ass. It was like, look, you need to understand. We can talk shit to each other. Now, if someone else comes in, he's like, calm down, sit down, stay back there. We will talk shit to each other. And the funniest part is, realistically, if someone came into our group, and just immediately start talking shit. It was like, we would both gang up on. Doesn't matter who they're talking shit to. One or the other is like, only we can talk shit to each other. And that's essentially what this was. Mm -hmm. Like, look, me and Mike have built this rapport of, hey, Mike, fuck you. I broke into your house. Yeah. Well, I gave you the key or I gave you the code. It was like, eh. Mm -hmm. But no, there was, no. If I wanted to do this, I would do this. But I want to win properly. And it was like, only I can talk shit properly and that's it, it was very interesting that one I don't know, transcript the, yeah there was three different panels but one transcript of this short dialogue of of eggman being like listen i know that you thought you were being cool but that's my nemesis and i want to defeat him not kill him yep huge difference between the two but anyways, yeah, no, I just needed to touch on Sonic because Sonic is obviously better than Mario, and that's my stance, and don't at me. I mean, I would easily agree. <laughs> don't get your, me wrong, your, I like, I your enjoy... Wife, your wife disagreed with me. That's fine. I enjoy <laughs> watching Mario speedruns because, now, hear me out. If Sonic makes a game of some odd-made maps for Sonic, I would jump to those. Yeah. Like, seriously, if Sonic did like, this whole... Like, user-made game exactly. maps of Sonic. Same way Mario Maker went. So yeah. if we did a Sonic Maker, and then jumped over Sonic Maker 2, I would watch those. Because, to me, the speedrunning aspect is in the game already. Mm -hmm. Like, you have start, you have finish. And now, how do you... what did both Mario and Sonic have? A start and a finish. Yeah. They're both platformers. So if we could get a true speedrun escape from this Mario speed run where it was just a platform meant to be enjoyed and and then we have Sonic who I'm Sonic I'm fast. Yeah. And enjoy the speed run where we have this chaos. I would enjoy it. I think that'd be awesome. <sighs> but so, anyways, what I wanted to talk about next was the airman who oh set himself on fire. The dude that went in full protest India. of the 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 conflict on the Gaza Strip. In uniform, by the way. In uniform. In uniform. In uniform. I don't know if he thought he was like a monk in the middle of somewhere protesting the lack of food or whatever that monk so was So I don't remember to date the last one. I know the last super publicized that I knew about was the 90s. Mm -hmm. And 
it was to protest um, the Gulf War. That was the last one I really, really knew about. I know there's been two or three that came up, but they were all minor protests and it was one offs. But the last one I fully knew about where there was multiple people doing it for the Gulf War. That was the last I knew about. And then I heard about, briefly, I heard about this United States Air Force Airman that was just like, yee yee, I'm going to burn myself for the Gaza Strip because I don't agree how we're and, and I'm approaching not, this. I'm not. Uh, the kind of person who's going to like look up the video, right? I didn't look up the video, but it came across my stream of algorithm. Yeah. And I saw two or three seconds more than I wanted to. Mm. And I was just like, mm. So the question being, was he like real calm about it? Like real chill about it? No, dude was losing his mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would expect because, like, I saw the 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 photo of the monk, and the monk like sets himself on fire, sits down in the middle of the street, so and is exactly just chills. In, in comparison, we we talk about people that have done all these protests. You're burning alive, and they yeah. know they're burning alive. Yeah, but they're holding it in. They're they're anyone who's ever been caught on fire understands this fucking sucks. Well, I mean, if you just burn yourself on the fucking stove, bro. Like I fucking it hurts. I went to I was being a dumbass, and so I I had made some potatoes, and I went to like mm, pour Mike's it potatoes. out, and I was going. I to, saw your potatoes in the fridge. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I went to pour it out and use the spoon to like hold the potatoes in, and my finger was there because I'm bright. I have strainers. I Oof. have multiple strainers. Oof! And I burned the shit out of myself, and I'm like motherfucker. You know, freak my dogs out. Kind of like when I freaked my dogs out because I was yelling at the camera for Keeper to shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yelling at my computer as I'm editing videos. Keeper, shut the fuck up! But, exactly, we have this airman trying to protest this whole Palestine-Israel thing. So, I mean, there's history dating back to against Jewish population. Well, we made Palestine in attack against, and that was the Roman, the Roman legionnaires, Romans across the board made right. made that. That's historical. You can look it up. That's when Palestine came into existence. It was never there before. There was Palestinians, but there was never a Palestine. Right. So we go into today, and this United States airman is just like airman Big A. I don't know his proper rank. Yeah. Airman, everyone's Air Force Airman, but he is burning himself alive for this because he doesn't agree. I, I don't understand that. Ooh, Cabo break. He is just a munch. By the way, I know exactly. I was trying to pull that vine out to grab wood for here. I remember the vine when I was chopping it down on our K and M footage. <laughs> that thing stretched three trees yeah like stretched up one tree down another tree across your brush up another tree before it's, i it's part of the reason why i wanted to kill that thing because it was taking shit over all this went over to your grandfather oak back there yeah that i wish we would have brought the gopros closer oh, that would have yeah. been a good one yeah that but motherfucker the... i i need to get back there and finish cleaning that up too well, now that Reno's almost done, I should be able to come out here and start cleaning up more of the brush and start setting up more. Yeah. But th I don't understand this airman standpoint. No, I, don't, I really don't. And, and here's the other side of it is, dude, you're in the military. You don't get to protest. That's just, I'm sorry, you don't have an opinion right now. I agree. I mean, so small touch on that because... It it cor correlates with this. Biden was like, oh, we're going to start airdropping food to Gaza. We're going to start airdropping supplies to the Gaza Strip where all this is going on. Also, he's like, on the same note, I think we should stop this combat. To date, to my knowledge, we don't have official troops there. Yeah. So did he just let something slip? I don't know. All I know is two statements came out. We're going to start supplying food to this Gaza Strip. 
surprisingly, shortly after this, airmen protested. So either the airmen protested and were now supplying the Gaza Strip, good, bad, and different, whoever's there's potentially getting food, supplies. I mean, Hamas is getting food and supplies. Let's be serious here. I mean, realistically, whoever has the biggest guns is will be getting food. Mm-hmm. Like, let's be over there, biggest gun rules the world. So we'll be dropping supplies, which is food, medical care, and potentially ammunition. Girl, leave your paw alone, girl. It's not a meal. It's not a meal, girl. I know you're adorable. You are cute as a button, but your paws are not a meal. And then we have the second part. He was like, but we also need to stand off and let let the war end. We need to stop. This. He called an end to it. So, one, we aren't a police force for the entire world as much as we've been for the past, was it, 40, 60, 80 years? Game was over, it? man. We're no longer there. Which then touches on the net. next subject I want to touch on. Okay, but can I touch a little bit more on this? Definitely, because I still want to touch on this. I was talking to my coworker earlier this week about this. Blue suitor? No. Okay. So sits next to me. Okay. Name starts sit next name to you. starts with a D. Um stands with Dr. So and so. Um and you know, I said I, I'm I'm very frustrated by people protesting Israel fucking going ham and the reason is is because i think at the end of the day we all need to step back and realize that if this happened in your town if what happened in israel happened in your town then you would also be just like israel and throwing the finger up and telling everyone they could fuck off and you're going to fucking glass these bastards well the closest thing texas has had with that was waco 1980s 1990s mm-hmm. i believe um and all these federal people came in to the point that, to date, everyone local was like, no, he's good. He hasn't done anything wrong. He hasn't, I mean, he's not even a nuisance. He goes on a run every day to the point that federally, they pulled over the leader of the whole Waco cult mm-hmm. and hold, held a conversation at a coffee shop. To date, this is recorded held a conversation, and then released him. And then 12 hours later, had the whole shootout at Waco. So the closest thing Texans can have to that is a religious cult. And then overseas, we have two religious cults, if you're non-religious in any way, fighting each other. Yeah. Over land that was a promised land thousands of years ago. Well, realistically... I mean, yeah, they're they're fighting each other over that. But realistically, Israel's fighting because they went in there and they fucking slaughtered people. Yeah. They did not, like... Oh, there was no bars held. Gun down. No. Every, men, women, children. You had a heartbeat and you moved. We're gunning you down. Yeah. And, and, then took, and then captured women and children and took them back. 300 some odd bitches last time. And so, realistically... I am fed up with people who refuse to recognize where they're coming from because they were leaving Gaza alone. They had put up their fence. They were leaving them alone. They were monitoring what they were doing and they were sitting back and watching and they were focused elsewhere in the Middle East, right? And then they pulled this shit and everyone is shocked when they're fucking gunning for them so fucking hard. And they're not worried about fucking civilian casualties and shit. Well, I tell you what, Hamas wasn't worried about civilian casualties. Hamas was fucking killing kids. So I need, I think we I think a lot of folks need to step back and fucking really take a look at what's go actually going on and stop their fucking bullshit ass protests and let these people work their own shit out. I do think the most interesting thing, because NATO as a whole took a step back. The world as a whole took a step back from everything that was going on because it, it's been going on for yeah. ever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. There's always been some fight over the Holy Land or Jerusalem or like Israel across the board. 
But the most interesting thing was NATO dropped and brought, um, was it like actual contractors in to build plumbing and piping and yeah. like metal piping across the board. Let's bring them to modern day. Now, somehow, somehow, these same NATO pipes that we laid and labeled and serial numbered somehow found their way to Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan as IEDs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wait, I mean, I don't, I don't think NATO is intentionally trying to bomb us from six, seven years ago. Right. For something that we dropped off in Israel. Right. And let's not forget that it's not just that, but some of those pipings were turned into fucking missiles. Exactly. From Gaza into Israel. They got proof. And it's like, well, one of these things just doesn't belong here. Yeah. Like, it's it's very interesting to look at this whole dialogue of, oh, all colleges across the states are like, oh, this, oh, this. And then businesses are like, oh, well, if you have this standpoint, we're not hiring you. Okay, to a point, if you put a certain social presence out there, I can understand. Mm-hmm. But if you're at a place protesting, which is protected under your First Amendment right. Oh, uh, man, that had me on a follow-up. But uh. Go ahead. All the colleges and... Well, you said First Amendment, right? I mean, it is protected to a point. Did you see that recent person who... I forgot. Hey, hey, I just caught this in passing. In passing. This is one of those in passing things where they were like, yeah, we need to put, you know, common sense restrictions on freedom of speech. So let me let me dive into this. Who does the First Amendment right protect you against? The government. That's it. Yeah. Not private companies. So private companies can be like, no, no, fuck you. You stand for this. I don't want to support that. I can support a private company not doing it. Yeah. Hands down. That they have the right to do that. Yeah. No, but this was a politician. Oof. Saying, saying, hey, we really. You know, this free, like, people are saying shit that's fucking out of pocket and that's not cool and it's hurting people's feelings or whatever. We need to put some common sense restrictions on freedom of speech so that we don't upset people. No. Why go PC? Seriously, why go PC? Because the reason I say that, we will never actually get to the point where we can have different, we had Ginger on here, major differing opinions from us. Yeah. Somehow we could still hold a podcast and talk to each other. Yeah, no, I mean, and would be willing to come back on. I, and I would love that. Like, we major differing opinion. But there's a point where we can come to a consensus on certain aspects. Although I don't think it's fair, because I don't think on that podcast we actually... We didn't touch on much on podcast, but off podcast we did touch on a couple things. Yeah. Next time, we, we will... I definitely will touch on more nitty gritty. Let's let let's go on Israel. Let's go on. Yeah. Oh no, Afghan. Mm-hmm. Let's go on. I don't know. Let's go back in time. Let's go talk about the Persian Wars. Where, which way do you stand on? Let, How do you see on things? Let's talk about California. Let's talk about California. Let's talk about Washington, Oregon. Yeah. Let's talk about this major change across Colorado. Another one. Mm-hmm. Like we'll we'll touch on those. But we're at a standpoint now where our constitutional rights are being affected by something that isn't even happening in the state. Yeah. It's like a private organization has always been separate, bipartisan from this. I could understand government entities being like, well, you're protected. We can still hire you. Just don't do this here. Yeah. Federally, don't do this on our ground. And we've seen that time and time again. Where, as long as you're not super loud in the social scene, we don't care. Mm-hmm. You can you can do whatever you want to do pre ninety or pre two thousand two thousand eight two thousand nine. You couldn't be gay publicly. Don't ask, don't tell. And we don't care. I thought that was like 
2010 or 2011. It, it could have been 2010, 2011. Hold on. Now I need to look this up. This is going to bother me. I know it was it was early 2000. It, latest it could have been was 2012. But it was just, just don't be gay in public. That was the military federal standpoint on it. And as long as you don't make waves, make wake, we don't care. Well, now we get to the point now where the opinions you make are now affecting both federal. 2011. 2011. There we go. So now we're at the point where the opinions you make are both affecting federal and private. Private has always, it's always affected private. That hasn't changed. But now it's affecting federal. It's like, well, isn't the whole intention of the Constitution to protect? To protect against federal? Yeah. So why am I being like neglected? Like, these are supposed to be the hard rules that we stipulate that the from the people that you, the government yep. has to abide by. You cannot cross this line. And so the whole insurrection, the first person has that charged, did the insurrection January 6th thing, has officially been charged, officially been charged, that was a brief pass by. I don't have any notes on it, but has officially been charged. Will be serving his sentence one way or another. Not the big Viking dude, and no, like officially is being charged federally. Okay. Like I said, I don't have much talk points on that. Yeah. But l- let's jump out of this a little bit. Let's jump into. Oh, you got something else? Then we'll jump into something. I don't have something else, but we should intermission before we jump into something else. All right, we'll, we'll intermission, then we'll jump to something else. Small potty break. Catch you guys in a minute. Yeah, I do need a potty break. Actually, I've, so I figured out what the Air Force's problem is. All right, let's go. The Air Force's problem. How much time we got left? We got seven minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, I'm going to try and Finish talk your this. statement, and I'm then gonna, we're going to jump into my favorite topic. I'm going to try and make this quick. The Air Force's problem is that it's run by pilots. Is that the end of your statement? This is The, the end of my statement is that the Air Force's problem is that, is that it's run by pilots. All right. So every time that there is money that is supposed to go to IT or anything IT and is supposed to make the Air Force high speed and badass, it goes to fucking planes. L- Okay, so let's conjoin these topics. My favorite topic as we close out today's session of... Is your butthole? No, of name pending. Is your penis? No. King for a day. Oh, king for a day. King for a day as we we, we close out. How do we fix the Air Force? How do we fix the Air Force problem? Actually, the Air Force is kind of on the right track. Okay. Here, listen. I'm all ears. Give Give me the stats. Give me the numbers. Well, I, I don't have stats and numbers. What I do oh, have well, fuck is me. that, well, because I don't do stats and numbers very well because I can't remember shit because fucking early on set Alzheimer's or all the alcohol I've drank. <laughs> you fucking pick it. Drink, pick drink, it. drink. <laughs> I got a solid 2.7. <laughs> but All um, right, king for a day, though. Fix the Air Force problems with so, today's issue. So, first off, the Air Force needs to stop being a corporation because it's not. Because you are never going to be able to pay corporation salaries. Because so one, that's where you're losing fix people. corporation. Stop being a corporation. Stop be, being a corporation. Be a military. Act like a military. Because where your retention problems are at is because you're trying to retain everyone by becoming more of a corporation. What you need to be trying to do is retaining the people who want to be part of a military. And, and we can't keep up with corporation standards. Okay, yes. agreed. Yes. So let's so go you, back to you wanna, the roots. You want to bring that discipline back. You want to bring that regular PT back. You want to bring. You want to act like a military again. So not regular PT, but actual, actual PT. Because they're where doing you do regular PT. Fucking do do PT five times a week. Fucking real PT. Pearl, stop. You're in real PT, let's let's dive into real PT real quick. I'm ta- I'm talking. We're gonna do push ups. We're gonna do sit ups. We're gonna do pull ups. We're gonna do calisthenics. Not we're ultimate go... frisbee. Not football. No, not. No, I. You can do that once every blue moon, right? Well, at least once. We'll do it once a month. Still build this whole yeah. camaraderie thing, but we're gonna dive into 
No, we're going to do calisthenics. We're going to do and weightlifting. I, we're going to do working out. I'm sorry. When an officer comes up and you're speaking to them, you stand up and you go to attention. When an NCO comes up and you're talking to them, you stand up and you go to parade rest. I can understand if you're sitting there talking a work problem that you sit there and you work through it, but you should be able to differentiate between what is a work problem and what is not. And if you can't, then you always default to, I'm going to stand up and go to the proper So king for a day so far, we got fix this whole corporation standpoint. Two, so that was one, corporation standpoint. Two, we have actual PT. What's three and four? So three, you need to re-empower your essentially middle management, which is your your NCO core needs to be re-empowered to do like physical punishment as in like making troop do fucking PT and shit as a punishment. Drop and do push-ups, right? Fucking re-empower your NCO core. Your NCO core has been defanged. They're not allowed to do anything anymore. So three is essentially, if I'm if I'm wrong, correct me, but put balls put balls back on our NCO core. Yes. Build them back up to no, shut up, give me a push up. Like, yes. You're wrong. Yes. Okay. Fucking so- fucking have your NCOs do the 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 unit cohesion and the small unit tactic shit while the officers worry about the fucking big picture. Agreed. And senior NCOs work about the whole the, the and, and senior NCOs worry worry about assisting the 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 upper Officer echelon corps, of yeah. officers and then they also help with training they the usher junior in the officers. new ones yes and usher in the new officer corps now and I will four? actually leave four to you what do you think the fourth should be so we have take out corporation we have build up PT, actual it, it, PT. And the reason I say actual PT is because it it's part of the we're all in the suck together. Agreed. And I, in my Air Force experience, I never actually had true Air Force PT. I was working out with Army, Navy, Marines. Air Force carrier. Yeah. Or was Pearl, it? Stop. Uh, Navy carrier I was working on. It was like, I'm, I'm doing sweat equity doing shit. Marines is like, oh, we're embracing the suck. Oh, you're Air Force. Oh, do 40 fucking pull up. What? So my fourth with, we have that, we have this, we have this. It was like my fourth, build the actual brotherhood. The proper brotherhood. Esprit de corps. And yep. do you know how we do esprit de corps? We put everyone in the suck together. And the only way that's been tried and true is build the suck together. Embrace the suck. Mm-hmm. There's books about it. It's like, if we can understand we're all embracing the suck together, what are we going to do? We're going to build a brotherhood. We're going to build a actual branch together. Because the upper echelons are now our enemy, but we are have together. each other's backs. Yep. Right? It's like, you, you're dealing with shit. Well, your shit is my shit, and we are dealing with it together. And, and sh- that is one thing we... Do, and even with Kel, we all deal with the suck. Mm-hmm. Your dad died. Now my dad died. Yeah. Because we are together. His brother died with Kel. Our brother died. We're yeah. all building this together. Like, build the echelon. So, the end of our king for a day. King for a day. Like, and don't get me wrong. This is a complex problem, and there are additional <laughs> steps. And when I said that, like, the Air Force is headed in the right direction, I meant to say that. They're bringing back warrant officers, and if they do warrant officers, yes, thank you. If they do warrant officers correctly, this could help. Um, but we are out of time. We're out of time. But this is the the this, last segment was King for a Day. I'm it, Keeper, and I want to keep doing King for a Day to fix the world's problem. And we'll continue and, this for the last seven. We'll, we'll say ten minutes. And I'm a. Uh, I've been Mike Culberson. I'm still Keeper. Uh, this has been name pending, and uh, everything else is offline. So, as he says, something about a like button? Hey, I need you to fuck that like button. Throw a comment below, and Kel's not here, so as he says, tickle, tickle the subscribe. Tickles the subscribe? Yeah. But. Gently. So, this has been us. So, have fun. Catch you later. Yeah.